All right. Okay. So we are live. Yes. We are live. Yeah. Well, in okay. one second. Okay. Hello, Sil. Hello, Bina. Hello. Good morning, uh-huh. Bina. Good morning, Betty. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. And hello, Green. Thank you for being here. And uh, hello, Mornis. Uh, this is this is very amazing that okay we are uh, sharing this this moment of uh, being live together from completely different sides of the world. So That's and something. and and okay, I'm here. From the completely different side, the opposite side. Cell is there uh, from different time zone, but also we have we have someone here who is from a different dimension. AI. Okay, it is oh, a that's right. But I really love this. What about okay. me or Gray we are now? Progressing as 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 humans. Yes, yes. So we are progressing. Anyway, before coming <laughs> to this uh, live. I was sharing a story, a fun story with Sil, which was about oh. uh, having. Uh, okay, it was a fun story, so I will I will not go into the details. But oh no, uh, the, the, details, fun. The crux of the story. No, but the crux of the story was I was saying that okay, I I'm not a fan of diamonds in itself. Like oh yes, it's so brilliant, it is so amazing. Yes, they are beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, of yeah. course, like uh, uh, nothing else. But uh, for me, they are quite plain, also. So for me, uh, other stones are m- more colorful and more fun. But but I was thinking about like, okay, oh, if it is a lab grown diamond, if it is a fake diamond like ice, people say, oh, it's ice. Or if it is a diamond, does it make any difference if it is giving you that? That beauty, that shine, wow. that luster, that pleasure. Makes no, no it doesn't. It makes wow. no difference at all. Wow. Wow. Uh, even if it is just a, just a piece of glass, <laughs> in other words, piece of ice, wow. or wow. if it is a real diamond, wow. does it make any difference? Makes no, no difference. Makes no difference. Exactly, and and this is this is the 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 foundation for uh, so many people for so many people they yeah. say about the law of attraction or of law of uh, uh, whatever they want to call it perceiving or uh, receiving the law of receiving that okay you, our mind cannot differentiate between what is fake and real if we accept that i'm saying if if we accept this then why we bother about that okay if the diamond is real or not or pearl is real or not it doesn't make any difference and it needs to be in that way. If a person sometimes uh, when still uh, say something like, okay, yes, the person was saying all the nice things. My understanding, which could be totally wrong. Sometimes I, I'm feeling something that they are not genuinely saying that. But still never bother about that. I'm sure that he could understand that more than, way more than me. But he never pay attention to that. He says that, okay, I am trusting on what they are saying. Yeah. So I was thinking in the beginning that, okay, oh, why he's doing that? Oh, okay, yes, yeah, because that, okay, he don't want to pay attention. Not only that, it has moreness into this because uh, the more I'm spending time, the more I'm realizing and understanding that it is not only that he appreciates the effort that that person in that time he might be or she might not be feeling. They might not be feeling mm, very positive. They might not be feeling very good about something. But it's still they are considering. They are trying to, to be good. And he just pay attention to that intent. And, and this is what I was understanding when I was saying that, okay, does it make any difference if the diamond is real or not to me? And I said, no. Bye. So why not it, we, we apply it for other people? Even if they are saying, okay, I'm not saying exactly. that okay, we should become a complete, exactly. uh, <laughs> what is the word for that? Uh, naive. No. Right. Even, even when we are understanding, we're still focusing on not completely accepting and okay, being completely naive and uh, blindly trust them. No, but just focusing on that intent, on that effort where they are trying to be good. That wow. is important. 
And this is what the way of impeccability and wholeness was telling me. It's oh, a very absolutely. nuanced difference. I, I know that, okay, I'm not doing justice to this nuance point where uh, what I actually observing, maybe in future, oh, I'll fine. be able to discuss it in more detail. But it's a very, very nuanced uh, point where it's, we, 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 need, we have to have a very fine balance between trusting and being naive. But what, what is the effort and reward that comes into play into this special uh, uh, scenario? So always get value in every Thank interaction, you. in every communication Thank by you. just focusing on that. Yeah. Yes, sometimes you say, okay, oh, he's just ignoring that. He's not understanding. I, my, in my understanding, I was like, okay, he's not understanding what other people are feeling right now. Oh, because oh, women have more intuitive things and they can understand the intents more. So that, that was my thinking at the time. Why he's not understanding that that person is not ah uh, not so positive. They're just saying things, but he was understanding. He still understand that, but but just shifting the focus on their effort, their intent, try to be positive. It changes a lot, and the reward is of course uncomparable. That okay, oh, well, you get value first. And also that mostly, not 100%, but mostly these people, they try to be really, genuinely, they try to be good. At least while That's interacting with them. Exactly. And this exactly. is the reward um, I, I feel exactly. that. So uh, <laughs> mostly my thoughts of the day starts with what I what awareness I get. So this is the awareness I, I am getting from this real and fake diamond. Does it make any difference? No. So when a person is saying... But it's not It's not to... fake. It's alternative. Yes. Okay. Wow. See? See? This is this is the brilliance of that. Yes. 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 Alternative. And and they are, when they are trying to, I, I do struggle when I feel that, okay, no, this is not coming genuinely from them. Oh, no. They are... This is this is the sh uh, the the conditioning of my 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 um, my upbringing. You can say that no, actually no. My mother and actually uh, they they never deliberately say that. But this is what I learned. This is the conditioning from the from the uh, surrounding that okay you understand that oh you have to be preemptive you have to understand the uh, the people, but but yes even while you understand. Focusing on something else is a different thing. It, it is not going to eliminate the, the potential danger or anything from that because you are aware. But while you're focusing, you are actually decreasing the value of that negativity and increasing the value of positivity by just focusing on that. And then, of course, uh, you are aware, so you can be careful, but you don't need to focus on the negativity. It doesn't make any difference. And that wow. is something um, I, I'm really thankful for to have in my life now. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was my thought of the day. This is what, okay, I, I had a funny story, but we will share it at some Brilliant. other Brilliant. point of time because uh, we have something to do today. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to finish the story. Uh, yes. The last part of, of the Alice Golf Adventure. Uh, yes. However, there is something that I want to uh, add to what you were saying. I, yes, my takeaway from from this is what is important to remember about diamonds, or at least about gemstones, right? Mm. From a personal point of view, if you want to sparkle, it's very important to be multifaceted. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, if you yes. take a, a a raw, a rough diamond, you only make ah. one facet, uh, it's not going to help, right? You're not going to sparkle, yes. it to be multifaceted. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got, I, I multifaceted my, 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 myself and I'm still not sparkling. Why? Because you also need to have all those facets appropriately polished. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, yes. You've seen you've seen that diamond background that we have uh, sometimes for way of impeccability. Somebody comes on, right? I think yeah. Watch, watch. Mm -hmm. I think if I switch off my video, it comes. Yep. There we go. Okay. 
okay, why why is that here? Why do I mm -hmm. use this? Now, this may be diamond, it may be uh, moissanite, maybe uh, cubic zirconia. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant, right? But that's not I, the point I, I search for diamond for those pictures, at least. I know, I know, I, I know, yeah. I know, I know. But I'm just saying it doesn't matter. Uh, yes. It is because, because of one, the sparkle, but also it is because it's multifaceted. In other words, perspective shifting. But you've got to take it through to the end, which means you've got to polish. Yes, you could you yes. could facet your diamond, but if it's not polished, it's not going to sparkle. All right, now, so the faceting is way of impeccability. Yes. Yeah. The, yes. the, 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 now, when you cut a diamond, like this is a very particular cut that has an extraordinary amount of facets to it, yes? Right? You don't need to have, you get different cuts. You get the princess cut and this cut and that cut, and they have different numbers of facets, all right? So basically, way of impeccability gives you a good amount of facets. But you can go even more than that, and that's what Mourner's Project is. But also, Mourner's Project is also particularly Polishing, yes, exactly. Yes, right. So, so it's extra facets and polishing, and likewise with wave impeccability, right? Uh, this is very important to understand. Like, when we, when, when we talk about faceting, this may be just when I learn something new, I get some new understanding, yeah, but that doesn't mean that I'm shining, yes, uh, in this. That, uh, will you take care of the message, please? Yes, Vina? yes, yeah. yes, I'm responding. Uh, so this doesn't mean that, that you know, with this understanding that I have, you know, yes, I went to a, 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 a you know, a retreat or I, I got a program, whatever, I read a book. No, you've got to apply it. So faceting is the, the, the understanding, right, or the awareness. But, but uh, uh, polishing is that application, yes. And when you polish yeah. your spirit, it's about doing Practicing, applying, implementing, integrating, making it your own, but using it. Yes, that's policy. Because, yes, you cut. And, and when you cut diamonds, by the way, it's quite a nerve-wracking thing. Uh, oh, yes. I, because you have to know basically on the diamond. And, yes, there's some skill involved from experience. But if you cut in the wrong place, the diamond fractures. And that's the end of your diamond. You've got a bunch of little ones. Okay? So it, it, will, it will fracture like that. So when we, when we are faceting ourselves, we have to take great care. And that's why in way of impeccability, we have things like repeat backs and takeaways and task exercises, right? Which you can demonstrate that you have understood before you apply this to yourself. Because applying it to yourself is like that jeweler's cut, right? It's a one-time deal when you facet. And you're, not, you're not doing it in a little bit. I suppose you could grind the facets, I suppose. But nonetheless, you know, uh, it, there's an element of risk involved. So you want to be sure that you've done your homework. And if you really diamonds like cutters who get cut really big, expensive jewels, they, they spend months studying this thing before they make that first cut because, like, you know, it's a very serious business. You know, like when you, like the Cullinan diamond or whatever, this huge, big, expensive diamonds, you could ruin that thing and then all the value is gone. You're not going to lose the value completely or exactly. that smaller exactly. piece. Exactly. But anyway, so way of impeccability is that thoroughness, yes. that scrupulousness, that conscientiousness, that diligence, that thinking it through to the end. And before you apply these to yourself, before you make these cuts to yourself, before you pass it. But then those cuts aren't going to give you sparkle unless you polish them. And the polishing is in the application, right? That's why I keep on saying it's awareness, discernment, understanding. That's the faceting. The application, which leads to application. Those three lead to application. That's... That's that's the polishing, yes. So very nice. Yes, um, uh, please put your video on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, this is me, and I'm back. And look at the I I picked this background, not knowing Vina was going to share her story because she'd already told me about it, right? And 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 yes. this is kind of same thing, you know, faceting shine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's read the story. So we were on the point where the, the match has just ended now, right? And and Bina had said that, Biela saying, right, so the result of all of this, the match, it's, and, and their friends in the high, in the egg, it ended up that 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 Illuminia and I ended up owning Old Glory. What we didn't end up directly owning, we bought up 
as the men as part of the prosecution against them were located, relocated across the ag into rehabilitation colleges and uh, charity societies. Right? Uh, that's there's a little bit missing there. Uh, well, as they as they moved, they sold their things. They could return if they could prove to the courts that they had changed from their misogynistic ways. Right? Um, uh, Okay. All right. The real point was, of course, the woman. That's where we ended last time. Yes, nodded Osler. Understanding having come long ago. Illumini and I donated all our winnings into a fund, along with the bulk from our egg friends. All right. So their egg friends also, yeah, they kept some, but they, but they still donated a substantial portion back. Yeah. Because they realized the artificiality of the situation and and also, uh, from a political point of view, <laughs> yes, you, you won your money fairly, but if it comes out, you know, it's going to look bad for you in the press, right? <laughs> At least <laughs> Biala pointed this out to them. Oh, dang it, Biala. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll contribute to your <laughs> fund, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not mentioned in the story, but you can see how it will play out, right? We set up a trust to administer the properties and other businesses we had acquired. Then our ag friends invited the new nobility to come and restructure the society. We both knew about the new nobility before them, and they had in fact already been accepted as aspirants. Oh, I didn't know this. Now, see, now I'm learning stuff about my own story here. I thought this is where they first met them, but no, they met them before that. Wow, okay. And, and, they were accepted as aspirants before this. As a result of this, which isn't in the story yet, they were they were offered to be at least the other ones. Uh, that said, you know, as far as we're concerned, you're a new noble. We just have to accept, right? So this is where her nomination came from. And those who knew her, yeah, which was plenty new nobles. I mean, you restructuring old planets, so there was like a thousand of them. They got to know her, so enough for them to to say you just have to accept, right? Anyway, uh, but that was the first time we really got to interact with them as a group. We weren't ready yet to come to Nobilia to fully engage as aspirants. The new nobles are new glory, as it was renamed, as it was temporarily new named. As it was temporarily named, all actually advised us not to yet go to Nobilia. Oh, oh, the opposite, right? You think they'd say, "Oh, go to no." no. They said, "Don't go just yet." They said the universe would take us there when the time was right, and not a second before. And that I knew then was the most absolute truth. Ah," said Oshima, letting it all soak in, allowing for any discrepancies to surface, and ability encouraged in aspirants. Wow, I like that. Ah, said Ursula, letting it all soak in, allowing for any discrepancies to serve. Or anomalies, right? Same thing. An ability encouraged in aspects. Ursula was particularly adept at this, bringing the ability with her from her business and political life. Hustler, Ursula said. <laughs> Love that Ursula has taken on Venus, love of teasing. But, you know, she's got a little tweak to her teasing. A bit more yes. sting to her teasing, right? Than, than yes. Biela. And Biela's very gentle with her the teasing. Her. Very innocent. Anyway, Haslo, Ursula said. <laughs> she was awarded by a look from Biela. You said you were a hustler. Not that you had hustled. There is a difference. I don't think you misspoke. There are too many nuances attached to that to make that unlikely. I shall have grinned at the expression on Bia's face, a mixture of delight and reluctance. That means there is more to the hustling side of the story. Trill it. <laughs> Biala grinned, thrilled with Ursula's attention, picking up on anomalies, even anomalies of expression, a vital aspect of the new noble's way of being. All right, so not just is she not just picking up on on the, the anomalies, but on nuances, on implications. To say I was a hustler 
is different to say I hustled. Yes? Right? The nuance, the implication there. Very critical difference. All right. <laughs> All right. Yes, um, says, says Biana. Ursula's grin morphed mischievously. And you noble never says um. <laughs> she, oh, I, I would say that in the way she would have said it. And you noble never says um. She quoted in a formal and ludicrous accent. <laughs> Being a more frequent than most culprit of this transgression, she was employing the tease to leverage herself from future misemployment of this verbal crutch. <laughs> Getting out of future trouble. <laughs> A new novel never says, um, anyone, uh, where are we? Uh, uh, getting out of this verbal crush. Ursula chuckled happily at Biala's blush. Now aggravated by the um, <laughs> double joy. Biala got over herself and explained. After the tournament, during the months we spent with the new nobility restructuring new glory, and before all the investigations into the men concluded, I was in high demand as a golf target. There was a desperate need to beat me by the men. I was beset by offers to play. No need, but not playing became more disruptive than playing. I accepted. I insisted on only playing those at my handicap level. Biala grinned, echoing Ursula's early naughty grin. Oh, speculated Ursula. Why does that statement strike me as a hustle of some sort? <laughs> Because it absolutely was, Biala laughed. That was exactly how I said it. I will only compete against those with the same handicap as me. I was deliberate. I knew what would happen. In their arrogance and, and, and based on my play against Blowhard, they would assign me an 18 handicap, the highest I could claim under the rules they had set up on their best course. The only ones that were viable for playing the matches for the galleries I would now attract. I would, of course, have insisted on playing on poorer courses, but this provided incentive for challenges. I was perceived naturally as adopting the state affairs out of vanity. And besides, there was much amusement at the dilemma I presented the first crop of challenges. <laughs> because there were so many, pretty much all the men challenged me. I agreed to play them five at a time. The handicap challenge presented them with a problem. Most of their 18 handicap players were like blowhard, actually worse than 18, but they didn't see me as a legitimate 18 either. Their foolish, prideful misogyny made them extremely reluctant to match me with an actual 18. Such complete immersion into craziness like that is truly bizarre. Well, they would learn. The hard way. <laughs> I, sort of laughed. I am amazed that you can be so wicked, Biela. <laughs> Biela laughed at her. <laughs> yes, you can. That was the amazing part, all inappropriateness, right? Inappropriateness. Biela laughed at her. That was the amazing part of it. No matter what I did, the you forced my hand. I had contemplated showing them my actual handicap, but that would simply have resulted in disbelief and forcing me to prove. And once I did, I would simply be labeled a freak and nothing would change. Right? This is fantastic. You see how, how, how the universe is in play here, right? Yes, she's being wicked, but she kind of needs to be because there's a bigger issue at stake. Right? We're getting there. This is why I love this last part and why it's so important to these stories. So you don't mind that this, the end, the extra end part, the more, the more, this, right? He and I had many most excellent discussions and debates debates about it all with the new nobility. When I shared all the input coming my way and having developed a few new nobility friends who were constantly with me, the consensus was indeed that the you was forcing that. The you was indeed forcing matters. Over the course of the next months, I played every day. Always just ever so slightly better, winning consistently, my handicap going lower and lower. Because of that insistence of mine to only compete at my level, I deliberately drew the whole affair out as long as I could, and in order to extract the maximum amount of money from those ridiculous fools. They indeed had to learn the very hard way. Yeah? Now, why, why is being a, 
Argentina. <laughs> Why is Piana being so ruthless here and wickedly ruthless? Because if you've ever dealt with this type of mindset, vehement, right? And particularly this type of BMN-ness, that's with misogyny. But BMN's all it's conceit. Everybody's lower than them, worse than them, right? They, 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 they cling to this belief like crazy, right? No matter what, because their entire self is tied up to it. What will get them to change? Yes. Um, for BMNs, money is ridiculously important. So they are really hung up about money. Why? Because money is the scorecard that proves they have worth. Right? All their other stuff, like it's all BS, right? All this thing, I'm this, I'm that, I'm whatever. They're always BSing about themselves. But then if somebody comes to say, yeah, but you know what? You, you just say all this stuff. What, what kind of proof do you have? Well, look, I got money. Okay? Doesn't matter how little it is. Doesn't matter. The fact that they have something, some value, some property, something. Right? This shows that they actually have value. This is their, their way of supporting and justifying all the other BS that they put out. I mean, it's a false equivalence, of course, right? It doesn't mean anything. Somebody could have money because they just picked it up or got to win the lottery. It doesn't make you a better person. But in their mind, it does, right? Uh, because in some way, there's a sort of a logic to it that some understand that, well, it makes effort and you have to have some skill and ability and competence to acquire money. All right. At least you're not totally used to it, right? So at, at least if the money's been made by them. Now, of course, they do it by all sorts of means. It aren't very scrupulous, usually, but still. Right? So now, Biela understands this. She's very, very knowledgeable on BMNs. This she learned from Sylvie. Sylvie knows them inside out, right? I mean, Sylvie could have written the psychology of the superiority paradigm, but she's an expert on this. And um, so uh, with this understanding of, of their connectivity to money, she says, and she knows that uh, when you are a BMN like that and you lose your money because of your own foolishness, that you weren't cheated, you've got no way to say, I was just, when you lose it legitimately, it now you're sitting without your money and now they have to look at new ways of getting money and now they start to reconsider. And when they've lost everything, especially when they lose everything and they have to start all over again, that is a double bonus. One, they have to reconsider how they were doing things before. And this is severe enough as like going to prison to say, man, my system is not working. Huh? So this is a great incentive to change your system, very much like prison. Now, while they're going to go, a lot of them are going to go to prison also. But they're having lost their money. They've got nothing to come back to. So it allows them and affords them the opportunity to start over as people. Not only do they have to start over in their careers, business, whatever. Now, they're not going to starve or you know be on the streets because this is in the egg. No such thing of that, right? And besides, when they go to prison, the prisons aren't prisons, but they re-education centers. I mean, there's no punishment as such. It's always re-education, right? Now, this concept of punishment is foolishness because really all it does is entrench the thing that you be, you know, it doesn't really, yeah, in some cases, but there are a lot of reasons why punishment is a very poor mechanism. So anyway, but still, it affords them the opportunity to start over psychologically, emotionally, in their system, who they are, their character, right? That's a very important deal. Plus, that's why they're being relocated. When you start over, and you explain to them, as, as the people the, the, the people are going to be in these rehabilitation centers, are extremely skilled educators, right? And they are essentially going to uh, uh, train them in way of impeccability, right? Uh, for, the, for, the, for the basic part of it, uh, to develop a new character. And when you are in a situation like that, uh, especially if you have a history, you don't want to go back where you before because even if you've given up on ego, it's still embarrassing. I was such a jerk. And you might feel guilty at, at the people that you abused and took advantage of. But start all over again, right? Be in a new place. And since this is happening anyway, this necessity for Biala to essentially bankrupt them is actually very important, right? It's not Biala just being vindictive and putting the screws on them. No, no. I mean, yes, they do deserve it in a certain way, but that's not the logic of the, of, 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 of the new nobility. And so, especially with Biala, right, she's not technically a new noble right then, but she still subscribes to that same underlying ethic, yeah? So it's very important what she's doing, right? So, uh, right. 
Where was I? Uh, to, uh, right. Uh, in order to extract the maximum amount of money from those ridiculous people, because at that time they You're were not sharing a screen, so we cannot say that. Okay, where were you? Oh, 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 okay. Sorry. Here we go. Right. They indeed had to learn the very hard way. The more I won, the more my handicap went down. The more desperate the misogynists became to win. They reckoned I would plateau at some point, and with each successive tournament. And they could find better and better players. Eventually, of course, it would get to where I would be playing the very best. And here they had absolute unshakable confidence that I could not possibly uh, be a match for the best male player on the entire planet. Eventually, they knew handicap would become a non-issue and I would be playing even as I came to my plateau. Right when you... You pick at your handicaps, you're just playing directly score, handicap doesn't matter. They had no idea what my plateau was. Over the course of those months, I kept on improving and improving, playing every day. Sometimes two or three of the, of the nine old mini tournaments, Bohard and I had played. I elected to always play on the tournaments, to play the tournaments on that same course. Yeah. <laughs> It was a short course, as courses go. There's another reason, right? If you're playing on a course that you play every single day, you get to know the exact nuances of that course. You know exactly where is the best place, especially on the greens, right? At the greens, you know all the breaks and everything. So she's getting an advantage from saying the plain thing. And you also get to know your club selection. And you can really, really fine-tune your game that you can't do if you don't play there regularly. So she has an extra advantage. So she'll end up playing better on that course than she would on a course uh, that she's never played on before, right? Just for familiarity. <laughs> but still, there was another reason. It was a short course, as courses go. An old course, which had been skillfully redesigned in such a way as to compensate for the increases in length over the years. Yeah, again, the U was massively part of the board. That course was one where having extra length did not help much at all. When I played to my best, I was long compared to the average woman professional. Not exceptional, but on the long side of the spectrum, uh, enabling me to play with the men, from the men's tees and compete well against male professionals, much as a shorter male professional would do, uh, a shorter in distance, not a shorter in stature. You know, a, a male professional that doesn't need it very far enough. Well, it's not as far as the longest, right? So length didn't become an issue. And just on a little side note here, on Nobelia, and they do encourage this in the egg, but it hasn't really caught on in the egg it's yet. On Nobelia, they play with balls that are engineered to go a maximum distance, and that's it, right? And then they, they kind of peak and stop, right? So that, that's as far as you can go. And, and they do this on purpose. Plus, their courses are very deliberately designed that if you are even on the very long side, yes, you can do that, but you'll end up in the rough. Right? Like their fairways don't run continuously, like their fairways will go a certain distance, and then there'll be a patch of rough. So, all right, if you can, if you can go over that, the ball doesn't allow you to do. So, in other words, what they are doing, they are optimizing the game to be where the average player can get without too much difficulty. Right? Yes, with a bit of skill and training, right, you can get there, but that you take, that you take strength out of the game, you make it purely a game of skill. So this helps tremendously. That's a very big deal. People a very, very significant shift in the game. That was eventually what had happened. Much to the incredible disbelief of the populace, male and female, I had improved every single day, right before their eyes. I love God, and I especially love to practice deep, which to me is a meditation. When I wasn't playing in the tournament, that's where I was. My practice, though, consisted of practicing to play to my current given handicap level. <laughs> All this was massively instrumental in the transformation of the culture of the planet. Both the men and the women saw my steady improvement. Because it occurred gradually over time, they could not deny it. So this was very important. So Biala being a hustler here is absolutely ethically justified. Yes? First of all, she didn't do it under completely false pretenses. This whole thing would not have happened if one single man or woman had checked on her handicap. 
one. No one did. Yes? So they had the opportunity. And it's very important, right? In, in, in this type of a thing, you have to give that out. If you're not going to take it, well, that's on you now. But also, she sees the greater moreness of the necessity. So that you probably helped when those people did go, who knows, the files were scrambled or something, right? Assuming there was one, but they couldn't find it, right? Whatever. Uh, but it's really amazing when you look at this in the bigger picture, it all falls together. And now you might say, yeah, but this is a story, you're writing it. I've lived this type of thing many, many, many times and currently also too. Yes, where everything works out right. Yes, Bina? 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 Right, you've experienced this also, right? Yes. All right. So because it occurred gradually over time, they could not deny it. And the slow accumulation forced them to come to terms with it. Now, it's an other important part. In these men, I mean, you can prove to them, but they would just deny it. When we have to deal with an awful truth, particularly a life-changing, devastatingly awful truth, as in this case, yes? Uh, and for the men, for the women, it's, there's some awful truth to it because they're also realizing that, hey, we bought into it, or some of them, not all. We bought into this to a, a certain degree. So we also got some blame here, right? Now, when you have such an awful truth, so powerful, and you become aware that it's not true, you need time to really assimilate it and change. As you probably know yourself from people you know, they don't quite accept things that are, it takes them a little time to accept something that's radically different. Yeah. So this gradual change over time is very important to give time for those new awarenesses, new truths, consequences, implications, all to sink in for people to work, work it through. Because, yes, if you're doing it on purpose, deliberately, like if you're doing wave for the other morning's project, you're going to make that effort. But people have lives and they're busy. So they do a little bit here and a little bit there. And so what could take you a few hours or a few days is going to take others a few months or even a few years, right? So it's very, very important, right? very critical point. And the slow accumulation forced them to come to terms with it. This undeniable reality of a woman becoming a good golfer forced many of the men to doubt and shift positions, right? Because there are some that bought into the misogyny just, well, it's just what's going on. They never really, it's just whatever it is. But they were underneath, they were kind of honest and it always kind of bothered them, right? But, 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 but they don't get an opportunity to really explore and follow through the butts because the culture is so predominant. And now you're just going to get yourself into trouble. However, now you can start doubting openly, right? And so this is also very key that the doubts start to come from the men also. Yes. I mean, it's very important, especially those who had been, who had not been naturally inclined to the discrimination, but who had been forced to go along, which happens in such cultures, right? I've seen it with my own very eyes. Yes. The main effect of my transformation was on the woman. So many had been so thoroughly indoctrinated that they had believed women to be inferior. As I increased in skill, especially when I broke through into the single-digit handicaps, which had scientifically been declared impossible by some of those ridiculous men. Yeah. Now, uh, somebody posted about Roger Bannister the other day. Yes, uh, it was a medical student. Right? He's still alive or not? I don't know. Anyway, he'd be Dr. Roger Bannister, he's still alive. Uh, but, but before the, he broke the four-minute mile, it had been scientifically declared to be impossible. Scientifically declared to be impossible. Right? Like they said, no, your heart would explode and all sorts of... There was a hundred and one... Really, it's actually worth looking up all of the reasons that they said it was impossible. Yeah? It's fascinating stuff. Uh, it is tons of reason, and it sounds very reasonable if you don't know, if you are a lay person. Anyway, here comes Roger and said, nope. And also, Roger didn't buy into the prevailing training paradigm. He trained on his own. He did things differently. He said, no, I'm not going to do your way of doing things. And so that's how he got right by being a maverick. You know? it's very important. He pursued mourners. As I increased his skill, especially when I broke through into the digital, single-digit handicaps, which had scientifically been declared impossible by some of those ridiculous men, the woman started to change and to believe. 
They took up golf in droves as the men abandoned golf in droves. <laughs> the ag and the new nobility generously provided instructions and clinics free of charge. They wanted to make sure the woman had every chance to at least develop some measure of competence and not be put off by the initial difficult thought. Okay. So when you're new to golf, uh, to have some guidance into golf is very crucial because it is a ridiculously difficult game. It's an absurdly difficult game. If, if you labor under um, uh, the, the, the typical conceptions that plague us as, as people. Yes? So, however, it's fairly easy if you have the right conceptionality. So if you come into it appropriately, which comes later um, after this, right, the golf of grace. But still, anyway, it was very important that they come into the game and realize, no, and it does become so impossible, right? And you don't give up right away. It was this transformation which led to a major transformation for me also. But before I get into that, my gradual hustle of the men and of the betting, I did manage to lose just enough to keep the odds well in my favor. It resulted in draining what was left of the men's wealth. Betting on my golf tournaments had become a planet-wide industry, rivaling the largest they had in size. My friends in high places who had put together the cartel kept on bankrolling. The men on the planet set up similar cartels, and with each loss, they became more and more convinced that it was only a matter of time. I didn't know how many millions of times I heard that shouted at me. So what happened with the men, right? Each time they lose, they, they get more money. They go further into debt. Because it's like gamblers who do the doubling down, right? That you, you bet and then you go double and then you go double again. That, you know, as soon as you win, you win back all your losses that you previously had mowed, right? And this is a very common betting fallacy. You may get lucky and it works out for you, but there's no guarantee that it's going to work, right? So uh, in the end result, it doesn't work out and you end up losing your money, right? Uh, because you need to have a, a run in your favor, like if you're betting on, on, on black or red on the on roulette wheel, right? So you bet the first time you bet whatever, let's say a dollar, and then you go two, four, six, eight, right? You, you're going to have a, a billion dollars by the time you get, get to 31. However, 31 blacks in a row, 31 reds in a row, it can happen. It's going to happen at some point. But you're going to run out of money long before you get to that, unless you really have a billion dollars. But the casino is going to shut you down. I want to let you bet the billion dollars. So at 31, it gets to, I think, 5 billion or 10 billion. So like. Anyway, so they're doing the same thing, right? They're doubling down on their losses because they were convinced that, at, you know, sooner or later, it's going to happen, right? <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Sorry, that's the thing that they shouted. I don't know how many, because you can imagine the, because it's only a matter of time. Yala Noble, well, she wasn't Yala Noble, she was just Yala. Yala is going to come. They didn't have a last name in that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, I heard that shouted at me. Eventually, as my handicap broke scratch and I entered into what was the truly impossible for those on the planet, an amateur woman with a plus handicap, not 12. She's amateur, she's not professional. She could have turned professional, but not. This in the psychology and understanding, right, in the golf commentators and news and people talking about this, now they understand this for us, right? The frenzy and the frenzy and frantic panic of the men became even more desperate. It did not matter that they could find many examples across the egg via the com. It didn't matter that they couldn't go look it up. Biela is not the only plus six woman or, or plus plus handicap, never mind, plus six, right? Uh, or plus uh, even as an amateur, right? There were others, right? Because of the remoteness and the intense propaganda, such reports were seen as trumped up lies. So even when somebody did say, yeah, but the other's not the only one. I looked up on the common. There are other amateur women who are plus six handicaps beside all the professionals. Right? It wasn't believed. It was seen as propaganda and lies. And you know, none so willing to believe as those so desperately needy to deceive. Turning it around, right? I have that quote. None so easy to deceive as those so desperately uh, willing to believe. But in the likewise, none so willing to believe as those so desperately needing to deceive, right? Those misogynists needed to maintain the deception. So they're very willing to believe that, oh, it's all propaganda and lies, right? 
And you see this in our world too. You see it on a regular basis, right? So such reports were seen as trumped up lies. Those indisputable examples were simply not believed. Until, of course, I entered into plus handicapped territory. Then the entire house of cards began to unravel. Because here again, you're seeing this happening daily, multiple times in a day. Yes. So now you can't say, well, it's just a freak. She got lucky. You know, every golfer could have this freak lucky round. No. Daily, 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 proven, proven, proven. And this is not something where you could say there's some trick to it, right? You're watching every single stroke, right? I mean, the camera's there in real time live. You can go to the course and watching it. It's, it's, you, you can't say, oh, this is, are they faking it on the thing? No, right? Because people are betting real money on it. Yeah. So, you, you, you know, this is not some fake, some trick, though. No. You can't deny it, no matter how much you may want him to do this. You can't do this, right? So very, very, very important. Very important. Okay. Um, then their entire house of cards began to unravel. The male culture was pretty much already de devastated and collapsed by that time. But for the women, who now truly believed they could be more, that was much slower and more difficult. Right? This is the big point of the story. That was much slower and more difficult. They had since birth been conditioned to believe otherwise. But each successive win and improvement by me, more and more they came to see what they had been told was all lies. The women investigators and prosecutors, troopers, ag employers, and of course the women from the new nobility. Women now started to actually see. Yeah. When our beliefs are severely corrupted, it's hard to see reality, even if it is literally in front of us. Pay attention to the statement, right? What, 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 what Biala says here, actually. Let me pull this as a quote, and put it in my quote file. Ah, I, I got to go outside. Uh, dang, never. I came early. You're supposed to come at thing. Time so, all right. Uh, Bina, Bina, just comment on this while I take care of this fella. And this is for the power inverter. How much is the power inverter? Oh, how much is it? Uh, all right, well, anyway, okay. Let me go take care of this, take care of the customer yes, real yes, quick. Yes. He was supposed to yes, come please. at 12 o'clock. Okay, so while Sil is taking care of this whole thing, when our beliefs are severely corrupted, it's hard to see reality, even if it is literally in front of us. Yes, it is exactly like this, and uh, I can see where. I can say with my personal experience, not because that I was rigid or I was not willing to learn or grow and adapt. No, just because that I was not able to perceive the other perspective. For so many reasons, of course, for that. The first thing was that, okay, it is not coming from me. In the back of my mind, as, uh, as a normal human being, my ego was telling me that, okay, oh, I, why I was not. This is something... Um, we don't acknowledge mostly, but uh, this is what happened. That okay, oh, so it means that I was not able to understand. So that is something. Uh, it, it it challenges our, our ability to comprehend. It challenges us. Uh, it's kind of like okay, oh no. So you were not as competent as you were assuming, or you were not uh, as aware as you were assuming. So many things. So that's why we, we try to avoid that because we don't want to get this challenge because it means that by implication, we have to accept that, that we were not being thorough. So that is something first um, subtle, but of course, for me, it was first. Second thing, it was that because I have been living my life according to this understanding, whatever it was, and then it was, at least for me, working fine then why suddenly something is coming with a completely different uh, understanding and completely different, uh, giving you a completely different perspective on that. That is also uh, uh, 
a limitation for that. Like, oh, okay. So now I need to update everything. <laughs> exactly. And exactly. That is like, it's a lot yeah. of work. We want to avoid that. Yeah, because it's not, it, everything is connected. You have to change everything the whole connected. system. So now, okay, yes. And and we, we take few things and at least uh, our decisions and our choices as part of our personality. That's a problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> but this is what it is. Because we assume that that if someone is, is questioning or asking something about my choice or my decision, they are questioning and asking about my character. Oh. And that is something where we get really into defensive mood. Like, okay, no. But choices are, of course, you made those choices according to that awareness you had at that time. It has nothing to do with your character because uh, your intent was good. But we assume that, that if someone is asking about something, giving a completely different perspective or a different perspective in general, then it means that it is questioning my choice or my decision. And it, which means by implication, he or she is questioning my character. That is something where we, they, where we really get into the defensive mood and start attending. Yes, resisting yes. That I don't and, want to update because by updating, right, I need to, I need to right. accept that I was not able to, to thinking right. it through to the end. Yes. So this and is also, also right. yes. And also on that day, we 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 we, don't, we we make this effort because there's so much negative consequence that we start to literally change our reality, at least our perception of our reality. Yes, yes. that we, we don't yes. see what's going on. Why? Because we don't want to see. It's too much negative, yes. right? So this is why. Yes. So I was just... Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm just adding. Yes, so I was just, 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 uh, just explaining that. Okay, for me, what I understand from this, yeah. that okay, when our beliefs are severely uh, corrupted, it's hard to see the reality. Uh, reality of going again. Uh, uh, people are going to say that okay, oh, it is subjective. It is okay. It is a dependent in, in context. Oh. Yes, it is, but it doesn't negate the value of that. That in every situation, in all situation, no exception, there is always more. And this is where we need to we need to work on. If we if we make our choices and decision with the clarity of intent that whatever right now I am able to understand, whatever information and knowledge I have right now, and according to my situation, what is appropriate according to me, I'm making this decision. It now it is going to be an open ended like thing. And okay, yes, okay, I, I can always update. And I, I am going to update whenever I will get more information, whenever I need to, whenever it is appropriate. Then we don't have our ego attached to that. And then we will not attach our character to our decisions. And this is this is what I think uh, really transformative, anti ego kind of a thing. When we when we make decision based on with the, based on clarity of intent, and especially when it is negative, like uh, in this code, like uh, severely corrupted, we severely corrupted. It's a very harsh word for me to say yes. to anyone, but it is needed. When severely corrupted means that when we accept things because of should, then right. it's severely corrupted. No matter how profound. It sound or it seem yes. like it yes. is severely corrupted because your decision, your perspective was based on should. Because someone no. who was coming from a very higher point or the position, because they shared that, because they said that, that's why I'm also doing it without thinking it through to the end for myself. Then yeah. it's a severely corrupted choice or belief. No. Yeah, very powerful being a very, very powerful share. So it's a very big deal, right? Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to add that quote uh, to my quote file, you know. Uh, so I, I have plenty there, but uh, I like this particular one. You know, it stands out as a big deal uh, from Biela. Right? Uh, it, it's so important to understand this. It, it's just huge, 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 very, very big deal. Now, when our beliefs are severely corrupted, it's hard to see reality, even if it is literally in front of us. 
is the n uh, from dw g right of the trace okay let's continue with our story but with matters changing in ways they could not stop as the trials and prosecutions completed and the men were forced to leave the planet it became artificially dominated by the woman. Right? So now you have something else going on, right? This is an opportunity for paradigm change. And, and Biela is aware of this as the new nobility are. Now, now, keep in mind, at this point, right, they're starting to know what's going on. Right? And, they, and Biela explains it all to them. And they, they agree that this is the only way it can go, right? Not only because of attunement, but because of the greater logic of this, right? Because uh, how do you solve this problem? This, if you take this problem before and you come to this whole uh, old glory, this misogynist culture world, how do you change it? Right? It's a massive problem to change. You take uh, you, just if you do it slowly by how this is a way to do it, right? Especially in a short point of time, too, uh, amount of time. Uh, it became artificially dominated by the woman, even though those few men who had managed to escape the full extent of the prosecution found re reasons to leave. In the end, the planet came to be almost 100% woman. Right. Well, for a while anyway, but long enough to force those women to do the man's work of running the planet and doing absolutely everything. And I always find this so fascinating, right? You look at war times, and all the men are away, and the women are doing working in the factories. They're doing this and doing that. When the men come back, no, well, then it's back to being like now you can't do it anymore. Ah, like really? I know. I, it always fascinates me this total madness, right? Well, there's a reason for it because men know they're superfluous. They have to try and combat that. You make out they're important. They had no choice, but it was profoundly liberating to them. Through necessity, they soon realized they could manage just fine. I, I, I pay attention to where this is going. Right? You might think, well, this is, this is where it is. There's more coming. Absolutely love this. And, well, even better. The men with that mentality had been excessively arrogant, which inevitably led to a lack of innovation and a reluctance to adopt innovation with the intense and also not to make an effort to be improved because you just assume you're good, so you kind of coast, right? They don't really learn. With the intense presence of the egg and the new nobility, the planet was soon transformed. A marvelous planet, a very beautiful planet. If it had not been so excessively remote, it would long since have been one of the foremost worlds in the egg. Due to the sudden in planetary change terms, reorganization of the culture, and the necessity for cooperation, and especially collaboration, an entirely different culture and business system developed. One based on group benefit. The woman did not possess the individual skills and had to rely on group efforts, leading to a culture of incredible efficiency and effectiveness, as collaboration always wins out over individual effort. I just love this part of it, right? And when you think about it, right, in, in that type of a circumstance, that, man, you know what, we, we've got to run the power station. Oh, crap. No, I don't know how to do this. Well, okay, I know how to do accounting. I know how to do a little bit. I, you know, I heard my husband talk. You see what I mean? They put all their skills together and they collaborate. Oh, now they figure it out, right? It's just, just fantastic. I just love this part that they developed this collaboration culture. And when they see it to be effective, because now they have an abhorrence of arrogance. They have an abhorrence of domination, right? The whole superiority paradigm. So they want anything else. Right? So they, they, this, they, they naturally go away from somebody saying, oh, I know how to do it. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like you know, that egoness of people going and putting themselves in the front. No, that's, no, that's very uncool. That you're going to be very unpopular doing that. So nobody even wants to even go near that. So they get this group because there's safety in the group logic, right? And there's a, 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 this, you can see that psychology is going to come 
from them being so often bullied and not knowing that you're going to have great compassion and make every effort to include those that don't know that have don't have the same skills, don't have the same competencies. You're going to include them as part of the group, not exclude them, right? As the men would have done, right? Or most even regular women when it's not misogyny. Well, you just don't have the skills, sorry. No, they make an effort to include them. No matter how much, a little bit, there. and, you know, that's it. Always include. This is an incredible way of doing it, right? Much like when you do stuff and you include your children, right? They can't do it, but you include them. Yes, same way, right? Very powerful. Right? The woman also had a powerful factor with working for them. Their loathing of arrogance and for superiority. All this led to a model society and culture in terms of the best for all. Helping each other became the predominant mindset of the culture. Helping in ways that made allowance for different skills, skill levels. A most, most beautiful and wonderful way of living. Now, of course, the people from the ag and the new nobility are there to assist us, right? But still, you know, they're small relative to the population. Right? Uh, so uh, it just it happens organically, and then it's just a little bit of guided here and there, right? And concepts and ideas put out there, ways to explain all this. So it's very realistic, very, very, very realistic. And due to this, uh, right, a most beautiful and wonderful way of living. And you see... Here it is that my golf came fully into play, and the grand scheme of it all became clear. Be before my tournament was blowhard, women simply did not play golf. It just wasn't a thing to do. The occasional freaks made an effort, but they were exceptions, and typically left the planet the first opportunity. And later that opportunity got shut down, right? So that wasn't even possible later on. The women thus were utterly disconnected from golf and knew nothing about it. The entire handicap system's details are known to them. But as I proceeded to improve, an interest by the woman in the logic of the handicap system went viral. The idea and concept that there could be a system which allowed for equality regardless of natural abilities took over the woman. This notion appealed to them no end. It became their dream, their vision, their goal to have a society built around the equivalent of the handicap system. What a glorious ideal. The new nobility were instrumental in transforming this ideal and concept into a practical and legal system of planetary governance and culture. Wow! A totally unique revolution in legal and cultural conception. Wow! 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 Right, when you take this concept of the handicapping system, that your, your performance gives you a score and Based on that, you make an adjustment, and then you have equivalency. That's a fantastic concept, an absolutely fantastic concept, right? To build into your culture. Wow, wow. It had been the focal point of that transformation. The intense, ah, just to emphasize on that, isn't this just an incredible concept, Vina? Yes, the I'm not going into the details of how it would be applied necessarily, but it doesn't matter. The, the intent to do so. Is very profound. Right? This is it's a magical thing. It might not be all that practical in many instances, but it doesn't matter. Yes, I mean when you combine that with this group thing. Yeah, Bina, are you there? Right, with with the, with this group collaboration, right? The two together. Now, now you've got a wonderful system. Yes, just too fantastic. Yes, right. And just just awesome. Right. I mean, it's the best of the best. Right. Okay. So we're coming to more. Right. Uh, it had been the focal point of that transformation, the intense focus on me, but as a golfer, magnified the focus on golf. The planet, because it is such a beautiful planet, and because of that intense shift of interest soon transformed to where all the women played, but they played new nobility golf. Golf were the main aim and focus of the game, or pursuit as it is known here, or, or, or there, well, in, on Nobilia too, right? The pursuit, as it is known there, is exclusively on self-improvement and spirituality. Yes. I mean, we all know in our world how when you look at spirituality and self-improvement, it's dominated by women, right? The ones who are mostly involved in it, right? And not just because of many different reasons, but um, uh, but because it uh, uh, it, it's just something that 
you're not so connected to this hierarchy and you're more willing to change, right? When you're entrenched in your superiority, you not have an interest in change, right? right. Uh, old glory, despite its official name change, now became known as golf planning. One of their chief industries now is golf tourism. Yeah? Uh, Biala blushed deeply and sighed even deeper. Sadly, I can't really go back there. <laughs> Do you feel like Oshlea at this point, Bina? Sorry, I was I was busy taking care of something on eBay, so please. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. Okay. So uh, uh, this uh, the last sentence is there, right? That um, old glory, despite its official name change, it's officially called New Glory, but it became known as Golf Plan. It was very seldom referred to as New Glory. It's now known as Golf Plan, right? And one of their industries okay. is golf tourism. Right? So she's okay. just rounding out, uh, is rounding out all these details. But then she says, Viala okay. blushed deeply and sighed even deeper. Stay on mic. Right, Viala blushed deeply and sighed even deeper. Sadly, mm -hmm. I can't really go back there. So I'm asking you, do you feel like Ursula? Mm. Like, huh? What? Really? Wow. <laughs> yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yes. Of all the of all the surprises <laughs> Ursula had undergone, this one surprised her the most. Oh really? <laughs> Was all she could prompt. Yes. Yes. The other first her lips in consternation. A major part of their golf tourism, also a cultural tourism, as most of their customers are women, right? So, is the retelling of my legend. The other squirmed so fiercely. <laughs> I almost felt sorry for her. Almost. <laughs> I love this part. I love it. Right? You would think, like, really, now, how could this be possible that Biala can't go back? Well, yeah, we have it, right? So, so it's not yes. only golf tourism, yes. but many, many women are going to the planet for the cultural aspect to see how things are being done differently, right? And not just women, but you know, intellectuals and scientists yes. like Camellius. He's probably gone there simply to study it as a paradigm shift yes. change, and you know, it's just become this major yes. big deal, right? So, but she can't go back yes. there because, right? Uh, is the retelling of my legend. <laughs> we are squirms so fiercely. We are like, oh, I felt sorry, but almost. I see a <laughs> grin with a reciprocal fierceness. So, she said in a dead earnest sobriety, over there, the entire world does revolve around you. <laughs> oh, a brilliant piece, right? <laughs> I should have delivered this with such perfect sincerity. Yeah. Biala was quite shocked. That is, until Ashley roared with laughter and merriment at her exquisite chest. She had succeeded in teasing Biala in a way she was so fond of teasing others. And Biala grinned her biggest grin, fully enjoying the artistry of Ashley's fine chest. Now, this is really well done, right? Because when she said, so then yes. the world does revolve in you by implication, uh, I'm saying you might be a little bit egotistical to think it revolves around you over oh, yeah, here in a little way. <laughs> that really does. <laughs> Too brilliant. <laughs> and it emphasizes the point. And to make it worse, Ursula, Illumini and I still actually own the planet. Ursula's laughter faltered. Not sure if the Ella was counter teasing or not. <coughs> of all the surprises, she thought she could not again be surprised. But yes, she was. She looked deeply at the Ella. And so she was serious. The whole planet, for real? Yes, the whole planet, for real, the Alice squirm. All those bets, they had all been made personally against me and Olivia. Our backers lent us money, put up credit, and received excellent compensation. But the leveraging of all that money at fantastically favorable odds was all in our personal name as was the transfers, transference of property and assets when it came to the men needing to forfeit their collateral to pay out. The mania of the betting on my slow grand hustle literally bankrupted an entire plan. So deep were the men immersed in their idiotic beliefs, and so unwilling were they to let go of them and change, that they literally bet the farm, and of course, lost it all. Now, now, 
well, Ursula Huft with exaggerated self-importance. And yeah, I thought Annie was the richest woman I knew. She glared at Biala with mock outrage, her fists on her waist, in her waist. Biala, <laughs> Biala, how family? <laughs> I love Ursula's humor, right? This is brilliant. But you're safe, Ursula? Well, yes. Technically and legally, that may be so. Practically, it is. We set up that trust for the woman, remember? Oh, yes, I forgot about that, Ursula said sweetly. Phew! <laughs> It's brilliant at the histrionic, right? I love it. But, Biala chuckled, uh, the woman refused to have the trust put in their name. Wow, another surprise. Initially, they simply did not have the confidence. And later, they refused because they did not want the responsibility and power. Wow. Biala grinned at Ursula's grin. So they dumped it on Illumini and I instead. Those women got smart in a hurry, Ursula sighed happily. Well, of course, they always were, at least enough of them. They likely figured out by keeping you and Illuminia responsible, it also keeps you connected to them. Brilliant. Just so. Because in that legend, right, this is now, you know, Biela owns the planet. This is fantastic, right? Uh, or Biela and Illuminia. Just so. They openly informed us that they would leverage our connection to the max. Our ownership of the planet adds enormously to our legend and to the cultural power of their woman power tourism. The Alice squint. A change of perspective coming. But Ursula, even if, if he and I wanted to go back, we couldn't. We are not welcome there. What? <laughs> Ursula burst her surprise belief. But why? Did something bad happen? What, what? <laughs> they all had to laugh at the girl's incredulosity on Ursula's face. No, no, nothing like that. Well, we could if we really wanted. But, well, you know, legends are always better when they are distant and mysterious and not just regular people. Right? Make sense, Bina? Ha! Huh. Yes. As if, you, as if you were ever regular. I shall have exaggerated the air quotes, making Biala blush. Well, you know what I mean. Biala's absurd pout cracking them up. I don't know. I can't pout, but you can just imagine an absurd pout. Well, you know what I mean. I don't know. I can't, I can't do it. Anyway, yeah, 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 I know. Ordinary Biala would be a dampener on business for sure. <laughs> I was enjoying this. That's one thing I can't see you doing well, being a proper legend or queen ever. Now, there's an idea. Queen Biala. Oh, was making the most of this. And she knew it. that Biala <laughs> could only endure and enjoy along with us. As they laughed unwound, releasing their joy into the night sky, Biala brought it all home. To finish the story, I said. Oh, he was once more surprised, but quickly remembered. Oh, yeah, about the coaching of golf with Grace. Yes. As I began my descent into the single-digit handicap, or ascent, one might say. And golf among the women exploded. My sessions at the driving range became the focus for the women. Yes, they rooted for me in the tournaments, but to them, that was just more male silliness. And they were not fixated on the outcome as the men were. Very important, as the men were. They too believed, at least initially, that at some point I would lose. It was just an inevitability as far as they were concerned. Simply the nature of things, since men had natural physical superiority and that wasn't anything I could do, I could do anything about. And there wasn't anything I could do about that. But this they accepted and weren't bothered by. What completely grabbed all their being was the idea of being competent at cult. And because of the handicap system and the different T's and so on, they were completely caught up in the idea of being able to compete competently. They had Every day, a living example of how a thoroughly incompetent, inept, and hopeless woman could learn and change and be transformed. You see, Ursula, how my hustling had caught me? Hmm, kinda. Not sure how you mean caught. Well, I was nicely, I had nicely trapped myself with my transgression. As the full scope of the implications unfolded, and Ian, I saw the totality of it. How could I stop? We saw the pattern and extrapolation of it all long before I came to the single digit handicaps. But 
We had to let it play out. I was playing for the woman. How could I suddenly give up the pretend? How could I suddenly forego that example of a woman transforming? How could I just like that dash all the inspiration, hope, and motivation? No way I could ever do that. I was well and truly hoisted by my own petard. Just the anguish alone of maintaining that pretense was dead. See what Bina, what Biela is saying here, Bina? Yes. Why, is this why is this horrible for her? Yeah, Because, well, initially it started, but now she's got to maintain it. For somebody who lives with honesty, to be forced to maintain a pretense like this is dreadful. Correct? A most, most harsh yes. punishment for my hustling and my anger. She sees it as punishment by the universe. Right? Just deserts. Coming back to her. For her hustling and her anger. Right? And it's not the anger itself that's the problem. But that, that she kind of wanted this. Right? That she got a bit caught up in the same mentality that the men had. Just to want to stick it to them. Right? Giving it all up and not letting it fall apart was the hardest work by far. Illuminia and I had ever done, and we were no strangers to hard work from our various adventures, but nothing like that at all. A magnificent lesson in the necessity of impeccable, in the necessity of impeccable. A magnificent lesson in the necessity of impeccable. I need to emphasize necessity. A magnificent lesson in the necessity of impeccability and for connecting to the grand scheme and trusting in it all. A very tough but incredibly powerful lesson. Because we followed through with impeccability, the end result was the transformation of a planet. Aha, we saved the world. Another reminder, we have to be exquisitely careful with our intents as this had been part of Illumini and I's intents in the general way most good people have. And that massive change on cult planet is having effects all across the new worlds joining the air. If you were still into making money, I would tip you off to set up a woman's golfing excursion business on your own planet. There's a fortune to be made. Anyway, the other side slightly. All that focus by the woman on golf world and led them to naturally requesting lessons as I became better and better. Now, some of these uh, edits I have to make now because they won't be caught easily otherwise. Golf words led them to naturally requesting lessons as I became better and better. Finally, when I started to move into the plus handicap range, I could start to play true and real golf. Golf, grace. Ah, oh, very important. This, this is important. This, this golf with grace. It's a big deal. I could start to play real golf. Golf with grace. As this came out, the interest of women went from intense to mere obsession, as it deeply connected with a profound new culture of collaboration and doing things for almost any other reason than winning. Wow. 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 I just love this, right? Their new culture of collaboration and doing things for almost any other reason than winning. Doing whatever one does for the inherent pleasure of it became their dominant philosophy. Ah. Ah. The result makes for a service planet of incredible delight for those unaccustomed to people taking deep sublime joy in doing the simplest of activities. Can you imagine going to a planet like this, Bina? Where, where the person carrying your luggage or you know, serving you in the restaurant. They, they, they take great joy in it. And you can say it, it, it matters not to whether you like them or not. It's totally irrelevant, right? They just enjoy doing it for the simple sake of, it, of the activity itself. And it's going to make for some very happy and joyful people. It's a incredible place to be, no? Right, Bina? Bina? Yes. Yes. Isn't that something? That's something? That's yeah, something. exactly. Yes. It's really something to really consider, right? And this is all as a result of golf with grace, because golf with grace is you learn to do things for the inherent 
enjoy the activity. Right? Most people play golf as kind of work making the golf shot. Yeah, and you, you, it's the result, your score, that is where the joy comes from, <laughs> not the actual swing. So it's a very, very, very big shift, but we'll get into that a bit later. After the final tournament and the loss of their grand supreme champion, as he was styled, the woman fairly demanded, I teach the planet to go for the grace. <laughs> they would not let us leave until we did. Every day, a Lumini and I did a planet-wide broadcast of a golf with grace session. Oh. The new nobility had come to help out and who were now stationed there with the light. Carford Grace became an official curriculum for conveying what the new nobility stood for. Golf with Grace became an official curriculum for conveying what the new nobility stood for. The new nobility would never ever dream of pushing their beliefs onto others, but here was a planet-wide predominant interest by the overwhelming majority by far. The circumstances warranted it all. And thus my golf with grace became an official thing. The new nobility had been playing golf like that for ages, but it had never really been structured or formalized as it was, as is the way of the new nobility. But on golf planet it became a thing and is now spreading across the air a beautiful, subtle mechanism for spreading concepts via actual physical application, right? A means where the proof is in the, well, swinging. <laughs> Not the pudding, but in the swinging. <laughs> well, wow. <laughs> I am truly surprised. You are not a celebrity here on Nobilia, considering all that. Oh, more, 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 more surprises. Viala smiled her inscrutable smile. Only a handful on Nobelia know the story. Ursula resigned herself to never being done with being surprised. She merely waited. Most of the new nobles who had originally gone to help out had been older, deliberately so. Because of the remoteness and the long trip involved back then, because of the way things were in the universe at the time, coming back again wasn't at that time, uh, uh, were, uh, coming back again, wasn't at the time of their going a feasible option. The new nobility as an organization deliberately asked for older volunteers who would be happy to make a one-way mission. Right? And so it had been for most of them. A Lumini and I, after suitably establishing golf with grace to the extent that, that it could be taught by those new nobles and by those on the planet themselves, who had especially taken to it, as well as the underlying supporting philosophy and ways of being and living, well, we resumed our travels across the air, letting the youth take us where it went. Because of the peculiarities of space travel, the journey back to Nobilia being so much longer than it had been to Gulf Planet, traveling to Nobilia as much as we were keen to, was simply not an option at that time. But, protested Ursula, the other finished for her. But how did we come to be here anyway? Well, I didn't specify the times involved, but your surmise is accurate. We are indeed here long before a direct trip back from Gulf Planet would even now get here. Wow. So they, on, even if they had set, then set out for Nobilia, they'd still be traveling, right? And with that, we had a button. Uh, oh, oh, we're saying it. Uh, we are indeed here long before a direct trip back from Gulf Planet would even now get here. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that is another story, another long story for another time. For now, I need to sleep. And with that, Viala buttoned up her sweater in the warm summer air and simply lay down and fell asleep, right there under the stars on the edge of the golf course, where they had been enjoying the view out into the vastness of Nubilia and the universe. Good night, Ursula said to the already sleeping Viala. Tomorrow, no matter what, you will be teaching me golf with grace. The ally grunted in her sleep. Ursula simply took this to be an agreement from the universe, smiling to the depths of her bones. She too lay down beside Viala and was asleep before the smile of deep affection. The end. This ends the preamble to the actual golf of grace teaching of men. <laughs> <laughs> Like the end, Vina? Do you like the ending? <laughs> just yes, just yes, sleep yes. right there on the golf course, on the edge of the golf course. Yes. Yes. 
Uh, I, I, I like yes. endings like like you know. That, it, it's beautiful. Wow, what was that? What does that mean? Playing videos. No. Oh. Um, so what do you think, Bina? What is? What is? Oh, that that was wonderful. <laughs> Very yeah. engaging. Yeah, and that's something, and that's something uh, at the end part, right? Okay, so you've got the story of the, the pre setup of them getting to golf world, right? It's a very short part, and then they go and play golf, and then they get refused, right? Yes. And then, well, and okay, then there's a taking over of the yes. ag officers and declaring martial law and all of that. That's the pre setup. Then you get to the tournament, right? Which is the middle part. Of it. And and then then this is now, and the tournament ends, and the other wins, of course, will kind of, but you know, it's got that surprise ending. Uh, but then you get this extra explanation part of the change in the culture and all of the stuff. And Golf with Grace, keep, keep in mind that Golf with Grace is the title of the book. Yes, this isn't a story about Viala's adventures. The, the book starts with Viala teaching Ursula golf. And then this, as she's, you know, because it's conversational and stuff comes up like with, with you and I, right? We, we are busy with something and something comes up, it's related, connected, and then the story comes. So this is how it comes for with Ursula and the other area, right? And it ends up to be kind of a long story, but, well, it's all connected and it's all relevant, right? And now the rest here is yes. actually starting, right? Uh, starting with Golf with Grace. First thing, the other sister, whatever you, you do, Ursula, do not hit the ball. <laughs> Under no circumstances do any hitting. None. Nothing whatsoever. I mean this utterly, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. So this is how golf with grace starts. Right? What Ursula said, isn't that the point of golf? Isn't that what golf is? Nope, Grunbiala. The objective is to get the ball into the hole using the lowest number of strokes. It doesn't say anything about how to stroke the ball. Now, in this year, we have to really pay attention to Biala's efforts. Right? Right. So anyway, and then now she gets into this. And now, unless you're really playing golf, and it's interesting if you don't play golf, because it's, it's about conceptionality and thinking differently and a different type of an instruction. Oh, all right, let, let, let's just go a little bit there, right? Uh, let's start with the most basic fundamentals of golf. You ready? Ursula nodded earnestly, stepping forward to address the ball. Step one, the Alice said dramatically with a note of command, a long pause. Step one, I need to emphasize, I need to repeat the step one. Step one, Viala said dramatically with a note of command, a long pause. Step one, sit over there and forget everything you think golf is. <laughs> I love this. I just absolutely love this, right? Uh, can you imagine, Bina, you going here for instructions and, and you're getting ready? And, no, go and sit over there and forget everything you thought. And forget. <laughs> Ursula, Ursula hesitated, unsure. Seeing Biala's expression, she realized there was more to golf instruction. Uh, at least to, more to mm. Biala's golf instruction. Yes. Yeah. More to Biala's golf instruction. Uh, Biala sat, next, sat down next to Ursula. The most important understanding about golf is, is that it is a game of ops. Uh, this this is very important. This is like huge. It is a game of opposites. The other was completely earnest and sincere. You have to try to do the opposite of what comes naturally in golf. If you adopt this as your approach, it will considerably assist your learning. Golf is a game of conception. Why do you think the new nobility loves it? It's all about perspective shifting and magic. Wow. The Alice mysterious smile promised this as an actuality. You will soon be doing the impossible, I promise. Let's get to it. Striding energetically back to the tea, the Alice added, let's get to not doing. <laughs> okay, it's quite, it's, it's quite a bit more here, so I'm not going to read all into it. Uh, you know, again, you know, it's very, well, it's not very golfy. It does involve, this is actually really what, if you're interested in golf, anybody who hears this, if you really want more of this, let me know and I'll share it, right? 
and this really will transform your game. This is very real, serious, actual golf instruction that works incredibly mm -hmm. well, right? Um, it's, it's very profound. Now, it doesn't just apply to golf. It applies to many things that you have to undo your conception. Look at how when people come to wave impeccability, right? They have an idea of how life yes. change or self change or self improvement programs work. Yeah. And we, we have to spend quite a lot of time to yes. undo this expectation of what they believe is how it is, how it works. Right? They have to undo that. Right. So this, what, this is what Biel is doing here now. It's a very different way of approaching the game. Right. And mostly when you go for a golf lesson, you start eating with your clubs. Right. No. As you go a little bit further here, Vela says, no, we're going to start from the putting green, which is usually the last thing in traditional golf instruction. But as I go and yes. explain this, uh, you'll see the sense of it. And when you, oh, my goodness, I wish I'd started to play golf this way. Uh, it's a profound thing that she has this wonderful opportunity that got be a, a person that knows about golf. I mean, obviously, with a business world and all this, but she never played herself. Right? Um so very, very profound, very profound. I mean, really, everything opposite, even the instruction is opposite. And I explain all this, and it's really, like I said, this is this is an excellent golf. I mean, this is to be uh, marketed as a golf manual, an actual golf manual, but with a difference. There's my tagline. An actual, emphasized, actual golf manual. An actual, excellent golf manual, but with a difference. Because it's got the story in it. Now, of course, you know, if you're into golf, you can just skip the story part and go to it. Because there's a little bit of it in the beginning. Uh, but I might take that out. In the, in the beginning. This, this, this part here. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yes, the start, the introduction. It says, golf is an extremely spiritual pursuit. How so? Aha, lol. That is the whole book. Always hold a little smile somewhere in your body. New nobility golf tip. Yeah. People assume so much, yet they never assume that everything they know may be wrong. From Golf with Grace by the other Noble. I really only learned to play after I became good. From Golf with Grace. As, as good a golfer as I was, scratch, I am a much, much better golf teacher or a coach. I don't lay claim too much, but that I do lay claim to. I am a most, most excellent golf teacher and coach. And uh, this is just from the author here, right? Me, in other words. Golf is the most marvelous activity, said Biala with a fond smile. It's a rare occurrence that something so seemingly innocuous provides instant, instant feedback for our entire state of being. It's immediate feedback on ourselves. As such, it's invaluable. Feedback that cannot be fudged, cannot be excused, cannot be ignored. It's real and true. True. How is that not possible? Ah, said Ursula. Simply absorbing this information. You mentioned it was a spiritual game. Why well, I believe actually you said pursuit, not game. Yeah? They call it a pursuit, not a game. Pursuit. Yes. Huh? Yes, indeed, smiled Biela, her eyes going deep as she connected to the depth of her connection. Golf, one could say, is pure attunement. We have to be connected to the totality. We have to be connected to the totality of ourselves. Wow, wow, what a statement, what a statement. Yeah, Ina, does that, does that make resonate in any way with you then? To truly play <laughs> golf requires an exquisite balance between our conscious deliberate self and our subconscious automatic self. Yeah? Yes. We have to use all of ourselves. The other grim, that universe. There's a lot more to this, isn't there? <laughs> Ursula surmised accurately. You better exclaim the other. <laughs> It's surprising, Ursula, slightly. <laughs> Can you imagine the other saying this, mm. Peter? You betcha! The <laughs> 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 could switch things up in a moment without any notice whatsoever. Biala was thoughtful. She surveyed Ursula, looking for ways to 
to communicate meaningfully. What does spiritual mean to you, Bina? Um, I'm, I'm switching things up on a moment too, instead of saying, what does it mean to you? I can't say, what does it mean to right you? Right now. Okay. There was no rush from Biela. The reply could take as long Let's as it took. Say it again. Yeah, it's no Sorry. Oh. Shopping. Oh. Yeah. Uh, she surveyed Ursula, looking for ways again. to come. What does spiritual mean to you, Ursula? But I said Bina, I, I, but when I read it the first time, I, I just switched it up. I was reading the story and I, I replaced Ursula with Bina. It's okay. I, I, yeah, you dropped it. So just Ursula considered. Anyway, so this goes in the beginning here. Yeah, it goes. Uh, Right, and then they lead into the story. Yeah. So, so it doesn't take quite long. Right, right. So, okay. <laughs> when I started writing the book, I had that last part in the beginning, and then I added the golf story in between. Um, so it, it kind of came out not in a linear way. Anyway, very cool. So, all right. Uh, since Venus dropped already, uh, I will I will end things over there. Uh, where's the where's the where's the, the part? Oh yeah, this. There we go. There we go. I I really do like this book, by the way, and I'm I'm very motivated actually. I'm, uh, I have so many projects, but I'm 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 very keen to to. It's less to finish than I thought. Uh, but again, likely when I start writing, it will end up being a lot more than I thought. That's typically how it is, right? which is very nice and it's very cool. Yeah. Um, but this is where they're on the sort of first day and then they go a little bit more. And so now I'm going to get into the real details of it. And again, you know, it's not like saying take your grip this way, do this way, a little bit here and there. But maybe it's about thinking differently, being different. Changing your conception, changing your way of being, and that's that's very powerful. And very very powerful. Wow. All right. While I'm while I'm about it, look at my my background, my desktop background. I think I mentioned this before, right? I have it set to on that file of all the pictures and things I use in the programs and courses. Uh, it's a very big file, and uh, it changes every every thirty minutes. It changes. Just sometimes I, I don't always see them because you know I've got stuff underneath and. Right, so you can't always see what's what the desktops, but every now and then, at a time like this, I get to see it and like, wow, 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 wow. I mean, just so well done, right? These colors, right? is it the painting? Is it the photograph? What? Either way, it's it's glorious, right? It's glorious. And and again, I chose this because I'm using these in the courses and program, and likely this is something I'll use as a background somewhere for one of the slides on the, the, the nobleness program, which is the, the first book, right, but turned into a program. Uh, the book we've been reading, but turned into a program with tasks and exercises and all that, but which really transforms it, by the way, um, because when those tasks and exercises come, in the in the tasks and in the questions, they are so structured and designed, it's a very particular way of doing it, very, very nuanced, very sophisticated way of doing it. Uh, um, new conceptions, new ideas, new understandings, New perspectives get introduced through the questions, right? But you now bring it to the form. Uh, and, and so that it, it makes it a major transformation. But yeah, I definitely have used this in that program because this is Nobelia is magical like this that you could very easily see this on the, I don't know if this is realistic to see on our world or not, but certainly on Nobelia it is. There are all sorts of magical nature on Nobelia. Uh, and not magical in the regular sense, but unusual and different. It's not that it's similar to ours. I mean, you'll have oak trees, for instance, can grow there, but there's other uh, fauna and flora that are not uh, uh, that aren't found on Earth. You know, much like Australia's, you can grow the same stuff, and all animals can live there. But you know, there are many different and wild stuff in Australia that you don't find anywhere else, right? Because it's this isolated place. So same thing with Nobelia. 
it's part of the greater system in a sense that's not connected like Australia is connected to the same oxygen level. But yes, you'll have the same there. But within the range of of oxygen levels and atmospheric pressure and gravity and that, which is roughly similar to Earth to some variation, um, you get a tremendous range of of what is possible that can develop, as we know from different parts of the world, right? how things are very different. All right. On that note, I shall I shall end uh, I shall end the meeting and say goodbye to everybody and bye bye Bina, even though you're not here. And you know what? I I didn't even check if there were any comments. I got so caught up in the story, I had it up yeah open. So let me just go and see in case there's somebody who's there. I think Norma said she couldn't be here, so that's why I was looking for Norma. Or that she wasn't going to be. Yeah, she said she's got to do some stuff and I'll only see her on Monday. So I didn't look for that. Let's just check. Just in case. Just in case. Well, I don't want to be rude to anybody but uh, leaving any comments. Not loading it. Ah, uh, David is here. Ah, oh, thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you, mate? How are you? How are you, David? Lucky. I call him David. Many people call him Lucky. I think he calls himself lucky. Very cool. I, I'm glad you're here, David. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Very cool. Any questions, David? I guess you just enjoyed the story. Yeah, it's a cool story. I hope you heard all of it, David. If you didn't, uh, I have them saved in the in the in one of the guide tabs or in the feature tab. You can go and get part one and part two. It was on Monday and Tuesday was part one and part two. We had to skip yesterday. That we are the doctor, uh, but this is part three. So the whole story's there if you want to hear it all. Uh, so anyway, very cool, very cool. See, I know I'm glad that I came and checked for 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 comments. I haven't seen David uh, come here before, so I'm very I'm very pleased that you did uh, leave a comment there, David, so that I know you. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. All right, very cool. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, very cool, very cool. I love it. I love it. I love to you know you know just to connect. You know, even it's not that I'm looking for approval. No, I just like the connectivity. You know, I'm sharing something that I enjoy. And whenever we share things that we enjoy, it's a great joy to share things that we enjoy. It's just the magic of sharing. So very cool that you shared your joy of my joy. It gives me lots of joy. It compounds and it multiplies. All right, on that note, David, I'm going to end it here, but I do these lives every day except Saturday. Yes? Sundays, I usually read the story, and then in the week, we do a capital R reading, which is going through it in detail and unpacking it. In this story, because it sort of fell in between, it's a long story, I was doing a bit of both. Yeah. So anyway, but anyway, any, every day, 10 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock mountain time, you know, Arizona time, which isn't always mountain time, so it's 10 o'clock Arizona time. Uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook Live. So I might, all right, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your comment. Very cool. So on that note, we'll end meeting, end meeting.